next. Well, in response to what it's calling leaks in the Western media, leaks, of course, by the CIA and the Pentagon, that Washington is considering airstrikes in Syria against the Syrian government forces. Well, now the Russian defense ministry is actually saying, hey, guys, a little gentle reminder. We've got S-300 and S-400 air defenses in place. They're up and running, ready to go. And you might be surprised by the reach and the radius of these weapons. So they are effectively letting the U.S. government know that they're basically setting up their own no-fly zone in Syria, saying, listen, if you put any strikes, target any strikes there in Syria against the government, you are going to be directly putting our forces in danger. Uh, the defense official says that members of the Russian Reconciliation Center is on the ground there in Syria. They're delivering aid. They're communicating with a large number of communities there in Syria. And so they're not really going to have enough time to determine a straight line, the exact flight paths of missiles, and then who the warheads belong to. They're not really going to have time to, to figure all this out. And so uh, they're going to take it out. If, if you fire into Syria, they are going to sh shoot down anything that comes their way. Uh, they're saying it, any unidentified flying objects. So this defense official is basically cautioning Washington. He says, you know, conduct a thorough calculation of the possible consequences of such plans. Now, we know, you know, back in September, they accidentally took out a target, which Damascus claimed was a blatant aggression. And they say that moving these uh, missile defense systems is just a purely defensive move. It's not posing any threat. So this is a threat like we're hearing from the Army Chief of Staff Mark Milley earlier this week. Take a listen. We'll stop you and we will beat you harder than you've ever been beaten before. Make no mistake about that. Other countries, Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea went to school on us. They closely watched how we fought in 91 and 03. They studied our doctrine, our tactics, our equipment, our organization, our training, and our leadership. And in turn, they revise their own doctrines, and they are rapidly modernizing the military today to avoid our strengths in hopes of defeating us at some point in the future. So as you can see, they are gearing up for World War III, and they have us all distracted by Miss Piggy comments in the news, things that totally do not matter. And let's not forget that also Russia just pulled out of the Nuclear Proliferation Treaty, a 16-year agreement. They're basically saying the deal is off. Last night's vice presidential debate centered heavily around the topic of Russia and in the event of potential military theater who would best be able to handle Vladimir Putin. One thing is clear, the U.S.-Russia relationship has been in a free fall. The Obama administration proclaimed bilateral peace talks over Syria are, quote, dead with Moscow and suspended a 16-year-old treaty meant to reduce the risk of nuclear proliferation. The U.S. State Department threatened Russia over their actions in Syria, and according to the White House spokesperson Josh Earnest, he said, Said everybody's patience with Russia has run out. Continuing on saying Russians have been complicit in the Syrian tragedy. Well, this comes as the U.S. announced this week that we're withdrawing personnel dispatched to the Middle East in anticipation of a ceasefire deal reached on September the 9th. Putin is also withdrawing, only he's withdrawing from an accord that committed both countries to eliminating stockpiles of plutonium, plutonium that's used as the core material in some types of nuclear weapons. So as we can see, as a result of this escalating proxy war in Syria, the relations between the U.S. and Russia are completely disintegrating right before our eyes. I mean, we basically have the army chief of staff saying that our enemies have trained, they've watched us, they see what we're doing, they're ready to strike because they see we have such weak leadership, a weak economy, mm -hmm. and they are gearing up for war. Now, give us a little bit of uh, more detail of what we're dealing with, Margaret. All right, so the Russian reset that was supposedly going to happen in 2009 uh, that Kane alluded to in the vice presidential debate, it failed, and the reason Kane said it failed was because of Vladimir Putin, although Medvedev was actually the president at the time. So, you know, he, he really discouraged anybody from wanting to know the truth. You don't really know the truth or Russian history if you think that Vladimir Putin isn't the devil. We're here, to, we're here to clear some of that up for you, and it looks like the U.S. has been posturing repeatedly for the past few weeks. We see George Soros come out. It was on CNBC right before coming on set, calling uh, what uh, Russia's doing in, in Syria utter genocide. 
one of the greatest humanitarian crises. Well, in reality, we are the ones, we're the provocateurs, we're posturing for war. White House is saying, Moscow, you're dead to us as far as uh, Syrian talks are concerned. Uh, you're passing a red line. We see Putin exit a nuclear security pact that's been in place for 16 years that says that they will dispose of the plutonium that they have. So we're, we're really getting closer to a line, Leon. That we don't, it's in no one's interest to be um, right. in this place. And our White House, we know, they're, they're making statements that are really, really dangerous for us. We just heard Milley say that uh, basically uh, he's wanting to engage in this conflict. Mm. Tell me whose interest that's in. It's definitely not in ours. And what Russia has done, they have, they've warned uh, the U.S. that uh, they're actually, you know, poking fun at Josh Ernest a bit here. And they're warning the U.S., that uh, American aircraft could be targeted by its air defense systems um, over Aleppo if uh, we don't stand down because they're working with a sovereign state, Assad. Meanwhile, Assad is offering amnesty uh, to rebels that surrender in Aleppo. So we have a lot of conflicting narratives going on. Ours is they're the devil. And uh, meanwhile, they're preparing for, uh, for it looks like for war with this drill and now with the shield and saying, we're going to shoot you down. Right. And isn't it just incredible that on, on the mainstream media, for instance, I'm seeing that the, the main trending topic is the fact that Sean Hannity and Megyn Kelly are fighting with each other. It's mm -hmm. like, who cares, who cares about, about these this? celebrity news pundits? Nobody cares. <laughs> they are gearing up for World War mm -hmm. III. And then whoever gets in, gets elected, gets an office is going to have to be dealing with this, which right. is why Hillary Clinton hopes to God that it's her because she, she's been kind of behind the scenes working on this with the Obama administration for years. The woman has been chomping at the bit. Uh, she even, when she mentioned Alex Jones, she also mentioned Putin and and indicated that she was going to, to meet Putin's alleged involvement in a cyber attack with military action. Yeah, that right. really makes a lot of sense. So she's been posturing for this for quite some time. We know that the Obama administration, their narrative regarding the Syrian refugee crisis has failed. And uh, everything that they've tried to do, even entering Syria, that the U.S. population has pushed back against. So they haven't had the support to do it or we would have already seen it. And uh, Russia, at the aid of Assad, you know, I'm not here to judge Assad. Bad guy, good guy, dictator, not good, not good guy. The facts are what we are doing, what our government is doing, you know, the, the, the hostile actions that are being perceived. These are things that are going to, going to have long term repercussions. And I really pray this doesn't happen. But I could see our warplanes getting into a provocation with Russian warplanes over Aleppo. You know, this is what this is the news of, of today, which is much more important, as you pointed out, is Megyn Kelly's stupid hair or some stupid spat or Kim Kardashian's butt. You know, I don't really care what you know what's going on, or nor do we follow this this type of stuff. But uh, you know, I encourage you take a look at these articles, go online and look at it for yourself because it's there. Right. And we've seen that how they have accidentally taken down Russian uh, airliners in the past. Turkey downed Russian Su-24 jet in November of 2015. So they have these type of accidents. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what they're basically saying is that they might have another accident mm. if an unidentified flying object um, from the <laughs> U.S. flies over where their servicemen are. And and let's also re recall that just this week, 40 million Russians were taking place in this nuclear disaster mm -hmm. drill. Um, Moscow is basically saying, look, guys, we're building these underground bunkers. We're going to protect our citizenry. When I read this article, it really just made me go, wow. <laughs> Here we know that the elites are building their underground bunkers. They're being prepared. Mm -hmm. But then on the other, other side, <laughs> people who do get prepared are being made fun of. And right. called, you know, conspiracy theorists and things for, oh, that's just a conspiracy. Mm -hmm. How dare you? Basically making it illegal to have stockpiles of food and am mm -hmm. ammunition and things like that. But mm -hmm. here we have in Russia, they're encouraging their citizens to prepare for a massive nuclear war. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's astounding that this is the news that we're dealing with in 2016 and the October surprise we've been looking at this for a for a pat the past few weeks we understand that the election is 33 days away and yet we're on the precipice of an of a military conflict with a world superpower you know this administration has done everything they can to unravel the diplomacy that's taken place between our two countries over the past 40 years what does that say to you we we are in deep doo-doo here and yet it, very little fanfare. You pointed that out well. Russia is preparing. They're preparing their people. 40 million people taking place in a nuclear drill. Yet we're not doing the same. There's something really wrong with that. Right. It's just like the nuclear preparedness that they w used to teach you in school where in they the tell 50s. you to stick your head in your desk 
which is basically just, you know, stick your head between your legs and kiss your butt goodbye and we'll hold on to your dental <laughs> records. That's how they're preparing us because they're quite all right with the fact that the U.S. could be entirely wiped uh. out. Now, here is a really hard hitting report from John Bowne where he really gets in deep about what to expect with the disintegrating relationship between the U.S. and Russia. All eyes are on Syria as the globalists, fearing a populist uprising, are pushing the narrative of World War III on humanity. I want to be clear to those who try to oppose the United States. I want to be clear to those who wish to do us harm. We'll stop you and we will beat you harder than you've ever been beaten before. Make no mistake about that. Other countries, Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea, went to school on us in hopes of defeating us at some point in the future. Mounting tensions with possible nuclear outcomes are worldwide. We are sliding into a new Cold War with Russia as Russia ships new anti-missile systems into Syria. This after Russia held a nuclear war exercise of 40 million Russians, mobilizing 200,000 emergency services and soldiers and 50,000 pieces of equipment. Elsewhere, nuclear tensions have risen between Pakistan and India after a jihadi attack on an Indian Air Force base left 19 soldiers dead. India then entered Pakistan and surgically struck terrorist camps in Kashmir. Breitbart reported, It is becoming increasingly clear that something serious has changed in relations between Pakistan and India as a result of repeated attacks of violence in the Indian-controlled region of Kashmir. It is clear that each country in a generational crisis era is on a trend line to become increasingly nationalistic and belligerent towards the other, and it is also clear that these trend lines will continue on the same path until they result in war. From the point of view of generational dynamics, it is not a question of if, but of when, and with the rapid rise in nationalism on both sides, when may not be too far off. Of course, with all of the saber rattling, North Korea doesn't want to be left out either. Satellite images reveal North Korea is constructing a submarine capable of getting the North Koreans newly developed ballistic missiles within range of the United States coastline. CNN reported, Doing a major test would be a way of trying to intimidate the incoming president. North Korea chooses particular windows that they know will gain maximum attention from the world, and the U.S. in particular. And Iran, after having plane loads of cash and sanctions lifted, is playing its hand. Washington Free Beacon reported the Obama administration misled journalists and lawmakers for more than nine months about a secret agreement to lift international sanctions on a critical funding note of Iran's ballistic missile program as part of a broader ransom package earlier this year that involved Iran freeing several U.S. hostages. According to U.S. officials and congressional sources apprised of the situation, Breitbart wrote in a speech delivered last month in Tehran and translated this week by the Middle East Media Research Institute, Mossan Rafidust, who was minister of the IRGC during the 1980s in the Iran-Iraq war, added that IRGC ground forces are five times better than the U.S. Army, saying, despite all the enemy media and cultural propaganda against us, if America wants to try its luck against us, it should know that we are completely capable of mobilizing nine million fighters. And of course, China, with its ambition to become the world's next superpower is readying its populace for war against the United States. In a Pew Research poll conducted with Chinese citizens, just under half of the respondents said the U.S. is a major threat, according to the report, marking the highest percentage among the seven potential threats tested on the survey. The other threats included global economic instability, climate change, cyber attacks, and the Islamic State. World War III is heating up, and the United States is on autopilot. Now authorities issued an alert for several uh, Mexican states after thieves snatched potentially deadly radioactive material used for industrial radiography. The Iridium-192 source marked XF71 was inside a container when it was stolen from a truck in Cardenas, a town in southern Tabasco state. As president, I will make it clear that the United States will treat cyber attacks just like any other attack. We will be ready with serious political, economic, and military responses. Sometimes I'm criticized in my own country for professing a belief in international norms and multilateral institutions, but I am convinced that in the long run, giving up some freedom of action, binding ourselves to international rules, 
over the long term enhances our security. Led by a weak commander in chief that has brought military levels down, backed by a State Department embarking on a strategy of foreign policy that has begun a brand new Cold War with Russia, bringing the globe to the brink of World War III all in time for an October surprise. John Bound for Infowars.com. Ladies and gentlemen, this Sunday is the biggest presidential debate in United States history. And Infowars.com slash show will have complete coverage for you, starting at 4 o'clock Central with the Alex Jones Show and then rolling right through the entire debate, even afterwards taking your phone calls. Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump, round two from St. Louis, Missouri, Washington University. This is the most anticipated debate ever, and we're going to have complete coverage for you at Infowars.com. Infowars.com slash show and also the new Infowars live app. We're going to have boots on the ground and we're going to have the entire Infowars crew in studio covering the debate, breaking down the things that the two candidates say in live time. Are you going to be stuck at home watching football or are you going to be engaged in the Infowar? Infowars.com slash show, Infowars live app, complete coverage of the presidential debate, round two, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. In the past decade, we have witnessed unparalleled scientific discoveries in the area of health. But no one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. DNA Force is one of the most expensive formulas to produce. Some of the ingredients in DNA Force are $12,000 a kilogram. We are using the coveted, patented, only American source of PQQ, CoQ10, and more. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game-changer that also supports the info war. We have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA Force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139.